When he was riding for that brand, selling 3,000 boards a month, he was making about $6,000. When he went out on his own, started his own board brand, selling the same amount of boards, he made $90,000 per month. What's up guys, my name's Levi, this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding. And today, we're gonna find out how much money do pro skateboarders make. The thing is, we're all interested in the inner workings of skateboarding. How much do people make? How much money do they got in their bank account? What do they get paid for certain deals? And all that sort of stuff. Here's the thing, we went and did our research. We went online, we dug up all the information we could to teach you about contracts, about money, about how long contracts and deals are, how do skaters make money, and guess what? We found the gold mine with our hacker. We found people's tax returns, we found all their personal information, we're gonna air it out in this video. Just kidding. We are not gonna share with you any information that isn't already public because we are not trying to go to jail. We're gonna get into, do they make more money on shoe royalties or shoe deals versus board deals? How much they make on contests? How much does it all come together? And then at the end of this video, we're gonna talk about how much your average pro skateboarder makes. Hey, do you remember that time that you logged onto Google and you searched so-and-so's net worth? We all love it because it makes us all feel absolutely terrible about how much money we make. But I hate to break it to you, when you search Jamie Thomas or Rick Howard's net worth, they're not billionaires. They're good guys, just like you and me. Let's start. Contracts. A lot of brands will negotiate with the pro skater, starting off with making a contract length. So you might sign on for a certain amount of years, committing to ride for that brand for a certain amount of years. Some smaller board brands actually just go month to month. They don't have contracts. But for bigger brands, let's say like Nike or Adidas, you're gonna definitely have a more corporate contract that's gonna have a time length built into it. The thing is, contracts can get kind of complicated. One basic thing that's gonna be on every contract is if you commit to riding for a brand, you can only wear that brand's gear. Let's say I ride for Vans, I'm gonna only wear Vans shoes. I can't be out seen wearing Adidas track pants or Bauer jock straps. It's literally just Vans shoes. Another thing is they're gonna be laid out what the commitment and the expectation of the rider for the brand and promoting the brand is gonna be. There's gonna be things like you have to go in a certain amount of contests or you have to film a certain amount of video parts or you have to get a certain amount of ads or photos or post a certain amount on Instagram now or TikTok or things like that. All has a commitment to the brand that the rider is gonna promote the brand through that stuff. One thing that's cool, that's kind of a, a perk for the rider, but it also helps out the company, is there is a travel budget built into what they do. So whether you're filming for a video part, or you're going on tour, or you're promoting, let's say, a shoe release or a video release or things like that, you'd be hopping in the van or hopping on an airplane, going to a certain part of the world and doing events, whether it be contests, video premieres, demos, signings, all that sort of stuff. You have to commit to be at these certain things. Another thing that's gonna be in a lot of contracts is something called photo incentive. So basically, if I get an ad in a magazine and I ride for S and I'm wearing a big S t-shirt, let's say I make like a thousand bucks, depending on the size of the S t-shirt within that photo, cause it's like I'm putting out an ad for them. It's also the reason why you see people at Street League and other X games and other contests like that wearing big monster hats. We might hate on these guys for looking kind of sus, but they get paid a lot of money for repping that logo. It's the same reason why they all have their Nike SB shirts or Karyuma t-shirts or whatever it is out there because those guys get paid to rep that logo. It's like an extra incentive to wear a logo tee. Another thing that's in a lot of contracts is contest matching bonuses. So basically, if you enter a contest, you do well, let's say Nigel gets first place in Street League, he makes 250K or whatever they make, that means that Monster Energy will match that and give him an extra 250K because it looks good on their brand that their rider is doing well. All of these things are the expectation on the rider or the pro skater or whatever. And if you breach these things, if you don't go on tour, if you don't get a certain amount of ads, or if you're seen wearing Adidas track pants with your van shoes, you can actually get canceled and kicked off or the brand drops you. Another thing that you'll see is the contract length. Basically, if you're a skater, you're young and you're hot and you're ripping and people are starting to notice you, you might wanna start by signing a shorter contract length because you might sign a $1 million deal 
in 2022, but then in 2024, the industry's grown, your name has gotten bigger, you now are worth more so you can sign a $2 million deal and so on and so forth. But let's say you're older, I'm 32. If I turn pro now and I sign on with a brand, I'm probably not gonna get any bigger. I'm definitely not gonna get any better. And so my career is as big as it's gonna be. So you wanna sign as long of a contract as you can for security. One cool move that DC did one time is they signed on Danny Way for 10 years, kind of near where he's at in his career now, saying almost a nod, a thank you. Hey, thank you, Danny Way, for doing everything you did for the brand. And what it does for Danny is he now has the security with that contract, knowing that he has income for the next long while. It's cool to know that with board deals, the contracts might be a little bit shorter because you can screen someone's name onto a board or print someone's name onto a board and then a year later they quit or a year later you guys are done with them as a brand or whatever it might be, but you can just make new boards and go forward. With a shoe deal, they sign people for kind of three to five years if they have a plan of turning them pro. Because with shoes, they have to design the shoes, they have to test the shoes, they have to then go and order the shoes by the hundreds of thousands of pairs and then bring them to market and sell them. And that's like a two year process just to start designing the shoe by the time it gets out, maybe a year and a half if everything's running insanely smoothly. But because of that, now the contract has to be longer. There are some kind of horror stories for brands where they didn't necessarily do their due diligence on the contracts and they've done all the work, let's say this year and a half or two years to get a shoe to market and right as the shoe was about to drop and they've spent so much money and time in building the brand around this one shoe release and then that rider quits. Their name is stitched on every shoe, their, their signature is on everything and what do they do with all these shoes, these hundreds of thousands of pairs of shoes? Let's talk about board royalties. For most board brands, let's say you're a pro skater for that brand, you get around $2 per board sold. Now, this is changing a little bit because in the last five or six years, a lot of smaller board brands have become more popular, kind of taking over the industry a bit. And so they might sell less quantity of boards, so they're giving a higher percentage of each board to the rider themselves. But on average, still across the board, let's say, a team rider or a pro rider sells 3,000 boards, they're gonna make around $6,000. And as well, a lot of board brands will have kind of a base salary. So let's say you're a team rider, you ride for board brand A. Your base salary is about $1,000. You make $1,000 a month, but let's say you only sell 300 boards that month, that means your royalties would be about 600 bucks, right? Well, the way that's worked into the contract is that if your royalties don't exceed your salary, you just make your salary. As soon as your royalties exceed your salary, you make the difference. So let's say your salary is a thousand bucks and you sell a thousand boards. That means that you would make $2,000 in royalties. So your salary that month is gonna be $2,000 because a thousand dollars of your salary and a thousand dollars of your royalty. Back in the day, this was a huge thing because the industry was a little bit smaller. So there was actually less pro skaters on the market, but the consumers, me and you, we still wanted these boards. So guys like Tony Hawk were selling something like 20,000 boards per month. So he's making 40,000 plus dollars just in royalties off that board. Bat Margera in one interview said that at one point he was selling tens of thousands of boards per month consistently for a year or years on end. So he was making so much money just off board royalties on top of his other contracts. It's great because then our pro skaters make money directly by me and you shopping and buying their product. Jeremy Rogers said in a No Jumper interview that when Shane O'Neill near the end of his contract with Skate Mental was selling around 3,000 boards per month. Now at $2 a board, that's $6,000 per month he's making off royalties off those boards. Shane O'Neill being the smart businessman he is, he found out that if he started his own brand, he would be taking in about $30 per board. So let's say within the first few months, April does well, which is his board brand now, he sells the same 3,000 boards per month, he would now be making $90,000 versus $6,000 personally. We saw the same thing with P-Rod when he left his last board brand and he started Primitive because his name and his following were actually bigger than the brand that he was on before. And so he realized he could use that to his advantage for his future. Let's talk about shoe royalties. Now talking about shoe royalties, it's not as cut and dry. With boards, we knew they were making around $2 a board. With shoe royalties, it bounces around a little bit. Depending on your name, the brand, your contract, all that sort of stuff, do you make a different percentage of sales off each shoe? 
Mikey Taylor, in an Avni interview, which you can check out right here, talks a lot about money and what his contracts were like over his course of his career as a skateboarder. When he was with DC, he said that he was making 5% of each of his pro model shoes while he was on DC. He then went on to say while he was on DC, with that 5%, he was making over $400,000 a year from DC, which is pretty good money. He then compares that to his Edney's shoes and clothing deal where he was making about $120,000 per year. Still pretty good money when you compare it to what all the rest of us make. And on top of that, each sponsor would be over and above that as well. So it depends how good of a businessman you are as a pro skateboarder and how you market yourself. He also said at the same time, he was making about $4,000 per month off of board sales. Mikey also said that you make way more money as a pro skater on a shoe royalty deal than a board royalty deal. Because let's say Alien Workshop would put out five graphics from different team riders in a series. You are one of those graphics. Now that shop orders, I'm gonna order two of the Mikey ones, two of the other rider, two of the other rider, two of the other rider, giving them 10 boards in that series. Now that shop only has stock in two boards in your name. When they buy your shoes, they're getting a size run from size six to size 12 or 13, and they're doing two of every size. So that shop now has 20 to 30 pairs of your shoes that they are going to sell in your name and you're making 5% on every single pair of shoes. In the last 10 years, a lot of shoe companies have started to bundle their shoe and clothing contracts together. So when we look at a company like, let's say Four Star Clothing, it used to be one of the biggest clothing brands within skateboarding, had the most epic team, and when Costin and Guy Marianos went over to Nike, they actually quit their own brand. They owned Four Star. They quit riding for their own brand to go over and ride for clothing and shoes with Nike SB, making it so clothing brands within the skateboard industry are having a tougher time. David Gravett said in a Nine Club interview that when he was pro for Circa, Nike SB offered him $5,000 per month to go and ride for their flow team. Now, if you don't know, that is the bottom. That is the lowest, the entry level position to ride for a team. And that was more money than he was making as a pro skater on Circa. Now he decided he was gonna stay with Circa because he had a pro model shoe over here and he'd be a nobody over here in Nike SB even though there was more money. Now let's talk about corporate sponsors. As skateboarding in the industry grows, more companies want their piece of the pie. So we're seeing corporate brands coming in and trying to take their part of skateboarding or be a part of skateboarding. Most notably, we see these energy drink companies like Monster and Red Bull and Rockstar and all the other ones coming in and paying these pro athletes for skateboarding crazy amounts of money that they can't deny. And now they are a part of the culture. Now, to give some perspective, when the energy drink companies come in, their average range for salaries that they're giving is between 60 and $300,000 per year for each pro. Now on some of the higher end, the bigger name skateboarders like Nigel Houston, Shane O'Neill, Chris Cole, they might be the ones on the higher end of that. Plus energy drink sponsors are notorious for matching contest winnings. So let's say someone like Nigel is at the top end of that $300,000 per year from Monster Energy. Then he goes in, he wins Street League, he wins let's say $50,000 or whatever first place is. They now match that. And so after that contest, in that year, he's already made $350,000 just from Monster Energy Drink. Then he does more contests, more contests, more contests. And this is for pros across the board. So it's a lot of incentive to ride for these big energy drink companies, wear their dumb hats, and go and win contests because you can make Boku bucks. I mentioned the hat wearing thing. In a lot of energy drink contracts, they state that they kind of own your head. That might not be the terminology, but that's what we say it is. Because the pro rider either has to wear, let's say a Red Bull hat, or a hat that has a Red Bull logo on it somewhere. Now it's funny, when you go look at someone like Nigel, he's got a crisp brand new monster hat. Go and look at like someone like Jamie Foy, who is pro for Red Bull, then he is wearing the same hat for the last six years and is sweat stained and brown and rank but it still has the Red Bull logo on it. One thing that's really interesting about Red Bull clothing in general is that you can't buy it anywhere. And so we have a friend that's pro for Red Bull and he told us that he actually has to mail his Red Bull gear back to them after he's done with it so there's no extras floating around. So every time you see someone in Red Bull gear, whether it be a hat or a t-shirt or something like that, they actually ride for the company or it's bootlegged from Thailand or China or something like that. 
Jeremy Rogers, who used to be pro for Plan B, DVS, Red Bull, these, all these other brands had said that when he was on Red Bull, he was making $150,000 per year just from that sponsor. So think you add that, you add other sponsors, you add other areas of your career. That's how you build out how to make good money and a good business around you. Now, as big corporate brands are coming into skateboarding, and sometimes it doesn't always help out the other core skateboard brands, what it does do that is cool is it opens up the lens to the world of what skateboarders are able to do. And so you have fashion brands that are hiring skateboarders as models, and you have movies that are hiring skateboarders as actors. It's really cool because now all of a sudden they're more versatile and they're able to do so many more things in the world. The thing is, no matter what your opinion is, it's putting money in skaters' pockets. So we are gonna see as skateboarding grows, as the Olympics gets bigger, as skateboarders become more of a household name, we're gonna see more corporate sponsorships. I mean, Jaeger Eaton just got sponsored by Chipotle. Would you take a Chipotle sponsorship? Let us know below. I mean, free guac? Here's the other thing though, it might have to be paired with a prescription for constant, unbelievable, painful diarrhea, so. Let's move on to contests. There's kind of two skateboarders in the world. There is ones who don't do contests, and then there is people who make most of their money off of contests, and they try to fly under the radar, but their Monster Energy drink hats are too big. A lot of the big name contests will actually pay skaters just to show up, like X Games and Street League. You just for showing up, you get a little bit of money. The average payment that Street League and X Games pay for a rider to show up and compete in their contest is between three and $10,000, which is pretty good money. And on top of that, usually their sponsors will pay for their flights and their hotels, their per diem, whatever they need to exist and be there at the skate competition. As we mentioned before, a lot of energy drink sponsors and some shoe and clothing sponsors, they will match earnings at a contest. So a lot of team riders can double up on what they make in a weekend. Now let's talk about social media. As the world goes on and the culture of skateboarding changes and the business of skateboarding changes, the lines between a professional skateboarder and an influencer online are becoming blurred because companies now expect a certain amount of views, a certain amount of posts, a certain amount of engagement in these pro athletes in order to help promote their brands. One of the ways that we're seeing it evolve is that a guy like Andy Schrock, who has a YouTube page and he owns a brand called Revive, he's posting about getting boxes from a shoe brand like S. And so he's getting shoes like this, showing that he has value and adds value to the company. Even though he might not be skateboarding on the level of a pro skater, his influence is really big. On top of that, some brands are even paying per post. And so it's kind of a paid advertisement. So a guy like TJ Rogers, who's pro for S and pro for Red Bull, said that Red Bull was paying him $100 per post that he would do that had a Red Bull can in it, up to a certain amount every month, but it topped up what he made as a pro athlete. So basically the time of the influencer is upon us. Now these pro skaters will probably never make what Kim Kardashian makes in one post, but who knows? I'd rather see a Nolly heel from no slide than some chick going on a date with uh, that really ugly comedian, whatever his name is. I mean, good for skaters. Even guys like Brandon Beeble was getting paid to do Budweiser posts. I mean, I would do it. I'm not hating on what they're doing. And Pete Davidson is funny, even though he laughs at his own jokes pretty hard. So the big question, the one that you guys fast forwarded to the end of the video to find out, what does a pro skateboarder make? The range is huge. I mean, what does a real estate agent make? Some make millions, some make $10,000 a year. The range is big and it grows with the potential of the rider. The value of the skater ranges and it grows and it moves over time and it's always changing depending on the culture and where the business of skateboarding is growing and changing as well. It's important to know that pro skaters are contractors. They do their own taxes. They are not employees of anything. And so they have to save extra money at the end of the year and GST and all these sorts of things. They are their own businesses, which makes things tough when you come in as a young person. Mikey Taylor said in an Avni interview, his best guess or best estimate is that the average pro skateboarder makes about $60,000 per year. Mikey also went on to say that he did the estimation, the math, that his best guess is that between 10 to 20 pros are making over half a million dollars a year. 
So out of the hundreds and hundreds of pros, maybe even thousands of pros that there is out there, only 10 to 20, again, best guess, are making over half a million dollars a year. That is a lot of money, but consider a pro's career is between five to 15 years, 15 years if you were like crushing it and you're a big name and you have legacy, but usually it's on the shorter end. You have a lot of life to live. You have to think about your family or think about all these sorts of things. And to put it in perspective, the NBA, their rules say that the minimum that a team can pay a player is as a first year rookie, $925,000 per year. As a second year player, almost $1.5 million per year. And again, the minimum by the time they make 10 years in the NBA, the very minimum they can be paid is $2.65 million per year. Now, what skateboarder do you know that could make it to 10 years and be making that kind of money? Probably, best guess, the ones in those 10 to 20. That doesn't mean a pro skateboard career isn't worth chasing after, but it might not be the most lucrative if you are trying to feed your family and be rich for all of eternity. Guys, there's gotta be lots of comments and lots of questions. Let us know what you guys think about this video. Let us know how much you thought that a pro skateboarder made and let me know what you think about how dumb my face is. All below, let's talk about money. Guys, my name is Levi, this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding, and you just watch how much money does a pro skateboarder make every single year. Comment below with how much money you make every single year before taxes. While you're at it, throw in your social insurance number and the 12 digits on your credit card because, you know what, we're all friends. Skateboarding, it's like a family, you know what I mean? We share everything. Guys, the best way to support us and for you to get the content that you love and need from us is to like, subscribe, and comment. Engage with us, tell us why we're awesome. Stay tuned for comment of the week. Ah, we got a spicy one. Comment of the week is from my guy, My House Has Wheels. He said, Levi needs a podcast called It's Interesting to Note. Guys, Keep making fun of the way I say things. I'm Canadian and we're gonna collab with you. Peace.